Assalamu alaikum, Quran Weekly. Uh, I wanted to share some insights from an ayah once again with you. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim. Wa anzir ashirataka al-aqrabin. Wa akhfid janahak liman tabi'aka min al-mu'mineen. Rabbi shrahli sadri wa yasirli amri wa ahlul uqtatan min lisani yafqahu qawli. The Prophet والسلام, was told at the end of Surah Al-Shu'ara, warn the closest family members that you have. The Prophet والسلام, gave a lot of concern and priority to his own family and making sure they get the message of Islam. But before we talk about delivering the message of Islam to our family, we have to talk about having a healthy relationship with them. A lot of times our communications with our family are really, really bad. We're not good listeners. We don't really have the sensitivity to understand things from their point of view. This can happen between husband and wife and parents and children and siblings with each other. A lot of times we say the most mean things to one another because we're family, what are you going to do anyway? And because we know each other and we know each other that well, as a result we know just the most hurtful things to say to one another and it becomes a norm. So if one, someone says something hurtful, you know just what to respond with that will be equally if not even more hurtful. And over time this creates a very ugly relationship between people in a household. Again, that could be between siblings, parents, you know, uh, and, and spouses, that this sort of thing can happen. So we have to kind of, a lot of times, reassess and rethink the biggest priorities in our life. And really the, the gauge of what kind of person you are is how you are to your family. What are the, how are your relationships to the people that are the closest to you? You know, you, you and I have a relationship with our employers, with friends, with people in our community, you know, people we know professionally, people we know socially, etc., etc. But they only know a very small part of who we are. The people that know us most and we spend the most time with and are supposed to be the most important in our lives are our own family. And unfortunately, they see the ugliest side of us. They see the meanest, most insensitive, most dismissive, most condescending side of us. And so, one has to kind of take a step back and say, what have I become? What kind of person am I that I don't even have you know, a, a healthy relationship with my mother, with my father. I can't even carry a normal conversation with him. I haven't talked to my wife forever. And if I do, I just ask her, where are the keys? Or, you know, where's the cell phone? Or did you send that letter? Or some shallow conversation. And when she talks, I'm not even really listening. I'm just kind of, uh-huh, sure, yeah, okay. Like that, like dismissive. And she knows. That. And then you wonder why she's always talking to her friends, you know, and why she's, she's never talking to you. And when you say something, she doesn't respond because she knows you're not really listening and you're not understanding. And it goes both ways, husband and wife and wife and husband. So one has to kind of really think long and hard about what kind of person you and I may have become. And by the way, this happens not just to people that aren't very religious. This happens to anybody. Religious, non-religious doesn't even matter when it comes to this. It's just a personal thing. And we become, you know, for men especially, I'll address men in this is talk a little bit. We're not naturally very expressive with our emotions. We're not naturally as sensitive as women are, as the women in our family are. So we assume that what we are doing is not having emotional consequences at home. You know, you're just, you go home and you just start watching YouTube or you start like, you know, watching the news or go on your computer for hours and hours or talk to your friend or whatever. You don't feel like you did anything wrong, but your family feels like you abandoned them. You don't care about them. You're just doing your own thing. You didn't give them any time. And you have to, to be able to be, to change yourself, you have to kind of really put yourself in somebody else's shoes, your wife's shoes, your children's shoes, your parents' shoes. Try to see things from their point of view that does not come naturally and it's not easy for us. And then once you do, to be able to admit and to apologize to your family that I have done something wrong. I know you can think of a thousand things that they've done wrong, but you have to start with yourself, you're the head of the household. You have to start with yourself. And it's going to be difficult. When you bring up things like that, look, I've been ignoring you. I know I've been ignoring you. You know, and I shouldn't be. I'll try to be a better listener. You will hear some very hurtful words in response. Because they're not expecting you to admit to these things. And if you finally are like, yeah, you better admit that. You have no idea how bad you are. And then you'll get defensive. The first thing that happens when somebody's criticized, if they admit, you know, they're, they're opening themselves up for criticism. So when, they're, when they open themselves up like that, and they're open to criticism. And when they are, the, your natural response is to get defensive. That's the time at which you cannot allow to become defensive. That's what you've been doing all this time anyway. Don't become defensive. Just take it and try to resolve it. You're trying to, your job is to not 
win an argument or to get the, the upper hand at the end of the day, your job is to have a better relationship, to have a better friendship with your wife, to have a real relationship, a meaningful relationship with your father and your mother, to have a sound relationship with your siblings. This is first. You know, a lot of times some of you, they, you know, they have a kind of a religious transformation and they, they were a certain kind of person before and they became religious. And obviously their family is not that way, so they have a hard time communicating with their family. And they try to just kind of shove Islam down their throat and say, you know, the Prophet was told, and then عَشِيرَتَكَ الْأَقْرَبِينَ Well, he was told that because he was already the best to his family. He was already, he, there was some foundation already there. He could build upon that and warn them. If you have no relations with your family like that, if you don't have a healthy relationship with your family, anything you say, including Islam, has no weight. Islam is just one of many other things that you say that don't carry much influence. So we really have to think very long and hard about all the lectures and talks and things we listen to and advice we take in. How is that changing me as a person? And the easiest way to gauge how you've changed as a person is how your closest relationships have gone through a change. How sensitive have you become to those closest of your relationships? Because at the end of the day, that's a pretty good reflection of who we are. That's a very good indication of where we stand, you know. It's easy to speak to strangers. It's easy to give a talk before a camera. That's easy. The hard part is mending relationships you have to deal with off the camera. You know, the people you have that are around you that have expectations of you, and you have expectations of them, and you have to deal with them in, in, you know, in the closest, in the most intimate of ways. So I pray that all of us become people that have sounder, healthier, growing relationships that are based on open, respectful communication, that we're tolerant towards one another, that we're able to use kind words towards each other and appreciate things. You know, I didn't talk about appreciation in this talk, but part of open communication is not just complaining about what you think is wrong and vent, you know, venting out your feelings. It's also acknowledging the good the other's done. To appreciate somebody's done something right, you know. And they, they, that you really enjoyed it, or you really liked that they did that, or you're really grateful for, for ha them having done that. Mentioning these things, never assume your family knows. Nobody knows how you feel, they don't know. You don't know how they feel, they don't know how you feel. It has to be talked out. We have to become people of expressing our emotions. And you know, in conclusion I'll tell you, a lot of us, we come from backgrounds that are, that are like, you know, uh, you, know, you know, Asian, Arab background, African background, where family structure has kind of a formality to it. And so expressing ourselves openly and emotionally, emotionally is very difficult because we have these really formal relationships sometimes. You have to cross that bound, you have to cross those lines, and you have to openly communicate. Respectfully nonetheless, but you have to openly communicate in order, in order for your relationships to get better. And never, ever, ever assume you know how the other person feels. Let them express themselves. Inshallah ta'ala, all of us will be able to create that environment in our homes that everybody feels comfortable talking. I'm reminded of Yaqub alayhi salam, how he made Yusuf alayhi salam feel comfortable, so much so that he can even tell him a dream. Like, what kid would think I should tell my dad a dream? Like, it's, if something happened in the playground, I'm gonna go tell my dad, you know? Oh, actually, I wouldn't even tell my dad, I'd tell my mom first. I wouldn't even tell dad. What kind of awesome dad is he? He makes his kid feel so comfortable that the kid sees a dream he didn't like, and he comes and tells his dad about it. And his dad doesn't even say, Oh, you must have had a bad dinner last night. Just don't worry about it. it. He sits him down and he compliments him. And he says, This is amazing. And you have a great future ahead of you. Why do you tell a child he's got a great future ahead of him? Allah will complete his favor upon him. After he sees a dream. Because he knows, as a sensitive father, the most important thing to a child is to be reassured. He's reassuring his son. In the Quran, Allah recorded this for us to know. That's how we're supposed to be, sensitive family members, sensitive leaders, real listeners. Sensitivity is the same as being good listeners. We have to be good listeners. And then respond, indicating that you really, really listened. And then finally he warned him and said, Look, don't tell your son, don't tell your brothers, you keep this to yourself, etc. SubhanAllah, it's, it's really beautiful. So we have to become people like that. May Allah Azza wa Jalla help us learn lessons from the great characters of the Prophet ﷺ, the Prophet ﷺ told us, خَيْرُكُمْ خَيْرُكُمْ لِأَهْلِهِ The best of you are the best, the ones that are the best to their families. وَأَنَا خَيْرٌ مِنْكُمْ لِأَهْلِهِ And I'm, of you, I am the best to my own family. So may Allah help us emulate the character of the Messenger ﷺ in our family lives. بَارَكَ اللَّهُ لِي وَلَكُمْ وَالسَّلَامُ عَلَيْكُمْ Quran Weekly.